uh, criminal and civil investigations, international affairs author. Tom, uh, under the circumstances, you know, thank you for being here, but uh, have you, did you ever expect anything of this caliber, this nature, this magnitude? Uh, <clears throat> I had been uh, security for Nomura Securities at uh, Number One Financial Center. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I warned them. Uh, I, ha I had been overseas. Uh, we set up an Athens base where we interviewed various people. We were doing business with uh, uh, Greece. We were doing business with Iran, Iraq. Uh, and uh, they, we, we had, our part of the job over there was to interview people and ask them what they thought of the United States. Uh, they said that they thought the United States was like a big fat kid with a big mouth that was afraid to fight. <clears throat> That's what they said. And when I, these are everyday people. Yes, in those these times. are people in the street. No, plus uh, higher ups. We were doing business with the uh, uh, um, people connected with the uh, uh, the premier of Greece and people connected with high arrow high arrow groups. Well, you said you warned them. You warned them of what? I warned Nomura Security. See, I had I had been there, security and bodyguard for the president of Nomura Securities. Uh, I had been going down checking the security, coming in and out of World Trade Center and Number One Financial Center, and I thought it was pretty weak. And I told them that that's what it was. And considering what the uh, the way the Arabs think, especially those who are very religious, that they are going, they're going to die and go to heaven. And uh, these people are very, uh, well, you can say, exceptionally the macho type, of violent people when they get mad. They're very violent. Uh, I went and I told them. I said, you know. I was at a Marine Corps, and in the Marine Corps, we checked everybody coming in out of the gate. You know, that kind of thing. Marine security, please. And I thought that this should have been done here at the World the Financial and the World Trade Center. So I went upstairs, and I, and I told the, uh, the people in, in charge of Nomura Securities that they should tighten up the security at the garage area where the, the, these vans are coming in and out and trucks are coming in and out to check them more closely. And uh, I felt that it would be easy for them to build, I had in my mind a large explosion for a building like that. So I had in my mind a large explosion. So what came to me was these small A-bombs that the kids have built that have gone to college and they have built these small A-bombs. Well, this is what I had in mind, that they would be in a warehouse, put the A-bomb in a van and drive it under the World Trade Center or the Nomura Securities under the, um, the financial. When did you have this discussion with you? That kids? was just before the explosion at the World Financial. Today? Just before, I mean, in 93? I told them this before the explosion in 93. Uh, oh, okay. I was there working the, uh, well, what the about, security. What about now? Uh, well, I knew this was going to happen. I felt that this would happen. I think it's all the Arab, all our enemies over there, Iran, Iraq, and Libya, and uh, the um, bin Laden in uh, Afghanistan are all in on this. But did you ever think it'd be planes? Did you ever think that airplanes would strike world trade or in other places in the country? Well, I thought that they would, they would do uh, kamikaze uh, things on us. But I, I thought, uh, I, yes, I, when, after the first time, I thought, well, they, if they don't succeed, what they're going to do is they're going to do it sooner or later uh, worse than that. Uh, but my guy went back to Tokyo that I had been bodyguarding, and then my job was over. And right after I left, uh, then the World Trade Center blew up. They had that uh, horrible explosion down there. When you first heard this morning, what were your thoughts? You know, it's it's really funny. It's I I was kind of shocked and kind of expected something to happen down there, but not that devastating. So I I, I just I, I I just I got I became angry. I, I first of all, being a marine, and when they killed the first 250 marines over there in Beirut, I felt that we should have went and uh, follow uh, the uh, Israel and the way they do things. And when somebody does something to you, you go out and get them and do something to them. That's the way the United States used to be uh, years ago, where if anyone in the, uh, an American or people that were, uh, <clears throat> that were threatened, their lives were threatened or anything like that overseas or something, you send the Marines over and get them out, things like that. You go and you, you, uh, you have to be tough. Uh, the terrorists, you cannot talk to them. They already have it in their mind that you're the, you, we are the devils that we are the evil ones, that they are the good people. And when they die, they're going to go to heaven. You cannot talk to them. You have to show strength. They, they don't believe in anything but strength and power over there. Even in their sales, sales over there, you have to show power. Tom, I'll stay with us for a couple more minutes, if you My will. But we're, now we're going to go to a, uh, a videotape that we had um, uh, 
a conversation that uh, Mayor Giuliani has had with uh, some uh, reporters that uh, that we uh, we have been listening to. And as we prepare that tape, we will bring it to you in just a moment. In fact, it's ready now. Let's take a look at that. Going on right now, we're trying to evacuate thousands and thousands of people. We have uh, as many of our police and fire personnel as as we have uh, down in, in the southern part of Manhattan, evacuating people, trying to save as many lives as possible. We've been in communication with Governor Pataki, who's uh, gotten the National Guard ready, and they're going to come in and relieve us a little bit later in the day. And we've spoken to the White House, and the urban search and rescue teams will come here also to assist us. But right now, it's the New York City police and fire, EMS, that are down there trying to evacuate as many people as we possibly can. And we've asked everyone to leave lower Manhattan if they can on their own so that it relieves our efforts. And this will be going on all day. It's a horrible, horrible uh, tragedy. It is that. Uh, Mr. Mayor, can you tell me, uh, is it a, are, are people panicking down there? Or no, are they people, I, I, I was, uh, and I, I was there right under the, right under, right in, the, in a building that got hit by the, by the debris when the first tower collapsed. So I had to evacuate with, with people. And we were trapped in the building for a while. And we, we finally were able to get out. And uh, we all walked to, uh, we all walked north. And people, everything that I observed, even though it was hundreds, maybe in some cases thousands of people that were walking on the street, they were orderly, they were calm. They handled themselves really, and, probably better than anybody had any right to expect. And Mr. Mayor, we were told one of the problems in Lord knows there are hundreds of problems. One of the problems was that a number, a large number of police, fire, EMS personnel have also been injured in this. Can you shed any light on that? I, 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 don't, even, I don't even want to contemplate what the number will be. But when the building collapsed, we had a lot of our police officers and firefighters in the building. And, I'm, and I know many of them because I saw some of them go in because I was there and I'm, I'm praying for them. I just hope they're able to get out. Uh, I think we all the losses, are. The losses to our police department and fire department I Sir, believe are going to be severe. Do you believe that, it, was there another set of explosions that caused the buildings to collapse or was it the structural damage caused by the flames? I don't, I don't know. I, uh, I, um, I, I, I saw that, that saw the first collapse and heard the second because I was in a building when the second took place. I think it was structural, but I cannot be sure. And can you tell us how many hospitals in the city and perhaps outside the city, oh, too? Uh, all uh, of them. Right now, right now, at, the la at last count, we were utilizing over 50. I think it'll be over 100 by the... By the and that was, a, that, that was as of a half hour ago. And we're utilizing all of the hospitals in New York City. We're utilizing the hospitals in Westchester and Rockland, Nassau County, northern New Jersey. And the, 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 the main thing we have to urge people to do is to, is to be calm and evacuate lower Manhattan. And as far as the rest of the city is concerned, uh, just to go about their lives as you know, best as possible. This is a, this is a uh, I, I, I never thought I would see something like this happen. I, I, I got there after the first plane hit and before the second and watching people jump from the top of the World Trade Center is a, a uh, unbelievable sight. Mr. Mayor, my colleague Jeff Greenfield is, uh, is, is with us uh, also. Jeff? Mr. Mayor, in terms of, you've already said that you want Lower Manhattan evacuated, you want everybody else to go about their business. Are there specific instructions that you want to communicate right now to yes, the, police, the, the, fire, everybody else? Well, the police and fire are, are there, and they're there in large, large numbers, and, they're, and they are, first of all, trying to, trying to get into the, the, the rubble and the debris to save as many people as possible. We also have thousands of police officers in Lower Manhattan, and what we want people to do is to leave Lower Manhattan, if they can, on their own. Just and the to so walk. Sorry. To walk. I, I, I just talked to the to Dick Grasso, who runs the stock exchange, and we have a lot of police there. They have 3,000 people there. We're going to walk them out. We're walking them uh, east and then north, which is essentially the way I, I uh, walked out. I, walked, I was right below the World Trade Center when it collapsed. And then we walked up to Greenwich Village. People should walk out of Lower Manhattan, get above Canal Street uh, for safety reasons, but for a second reason. We need people out of there so we can get thousands of ambulances in and out over the course of the next couple hours. And the fewer people we have there, the more lives we're going to be able to save. Mr. Mayor, are the subways operating? The subways are operating outside of Manhattan. 
outside, subway, of, Manhattan. outside of Manhattan, the subways are, op are operating. A couple of delays here and there, but all five, uh, the other four boroughs, the subways are operating. In Manhattan, there are significant delays. We thought we had the Lexington Avenue open, but it is not. I'm just checking right now. The Lexington Avenue is, is, not, is not open. The A train is working, and uh, people will just have to just have to, you know, test and see. The best thing to do right now is to walk. The safest and best thing to do is to walk to your destination where schools have remained open. And we've worked with the, uh, the chancellor to try to make certain that the schools will remain open for as long as they have to to help uh, parents with, uh, with the kids that, are, that, that would be coming home, you know, starting at around 1 or 2 o'clock. Mr. Mayor, as you know better than uh, anyone, and it's... Uh, certainly New Yorkers know, but people around the country perhaps do not. This is election day here. Uh, what is the status of the election? We canceled it. The governor and I uh, decided about an hour, an hour, an hour, an hour and a half ago that uh, it made no sense to have an election today. We needed all those police officers who were at the election site, and we need to focus on on uh, on, on rescue. So we'll we'll find another day. We'll find another day for the election. The governor and I made that decision about an hour, an hour and a half ago. Mr. Mayor. Um, you're a very focused guy in moments like this. Is it hard, given the magnitude of what's happened here and around the country, to focus on what you have to do and not just be angry? It's, it's very hard, and it's very, very hard because I know some of the people uh, in, that, that are there. They're personal friends and close friends who are, who, in who fact, are, Mr. Who are, in, who are in the building, and I haven't been able to find out if they're safe yet. Your emergency command center, what some people have called a bunker, is was located, was it not, in one of the World Trade Center buildings? Uh, it was located uh, close enough to it so that it was affected by it. Not in, it's not, not in one of the buildings, but it was located uh, right in that area, as, as is uh, City Hall, the police department, and all of them had to be evacuated. So, that, I mean, that, the, that, that area of Manhattan, once the... Uh, I, I was in a building at the time that we were using as a command center and uh, we were trapped in the building for a while for about uh, 20 minutes not able to get out different exits that were overcome with smoke and debris mr mayor just as a practical question do hospitals need help do they need uh, hospitals need all of the help uh, they can get we've we're getting a great deal of help from the surrounding areas the governor has mobilized the state in order to make hospitals available to us outside of Manhattan. Uh, any hospital personnel or emergency personnel that want to come in and volunteer, that would be enormously helpful. But the, the best thing for us to do right now, and we're trying to coordinate, is to, is to move people out of the city to hospitals in surrounding areas, which we're, which we're actually doing now. But so far, though, our hospital system is... We have a, we're very fortunate to have a gigantic hospital system. Will you then? Do they have enough blood? Do they need blood? Do they need people to come sure, in and help them out? I'm sure they will. Uh, we're getting the National Guard to relieve our people by uh, early to late this afternoon. They're being mobilized now. And three urban search and rescue teams are going to come to New York City to help us. And then anyone that wants to volunteer from surrounding areas, volunteer fire departments and others, we're working with them now to do that, to try to relieve our fire department. It's a horrific day, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there's no possible way to begin to describe it. Uh, no, there is to, not. To see, to see uh, what happened there is, of course, it makes you very, very angry. Uh, it's almost impossible to describe the level of anger that you have that somebody or someone would do something like this. And sure. all of the good and wonderful people that were affected by this. There's no, there's no reason for this. There's no excuse for this. And there's uh, something like this. It's just something you never thought you would live to see. I couldn't agree more, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. New York's Mayor Rudy Giuliani on what was to be an election day, the mayor... Okay, that was Mayor Giuliani discussing what happened this morning and how New York is coping and as if the horror could not get worse. Get we, worse, now we have unconfirmed reports. Well, Brenda, we have unconfirmed reports that there was a cell phone call made from the plane that crashed into the World Trade Center that you're seeing right there just before it happened. The cell phone caller apparently said that panic was on board the plane, that people were being stabbed. Uh, that's all we have at the moment. That's all we heard, but uh, UPN 9 News has, uh, that was reported to us, and uh, we have it on reliable authority that that's an inaccurate statement. 
And right now there are still 50 commercial airplanes over airspace in the U.S. that were apparently already there before 9.30 when the FAA called off and said all airports should be shut down and at 9.40 bridges and tunnels should be shut down. But right now there are still 50 commercial airplanes over airspace that need to get to someplace safely. And we said earlier that they were being diverted to Canada. Exactly. And the ones coming in from Europe were being told to go back to exactly. Europe. Uh, because the aircraft uh, uh, travel throughout the United States has stopped by the FAA mm -hmm. and uh, in for the foreseeable time. Exactly. We have um, Logan Crawford, who is live with us uh, down in Jersey City, which is across the bay from lower Manhattan. Uh, Logan, it's, uh, the, the, the pictures there are, are, are just telling, aren't they? Absolutely, Rylan. This is a section of Liberty State Park where you usually have an awesome view of the World Trade Center, but instead, this is what you see, just a large cloud of black and gray smoke. What used to be the World Trade Center, what used to be perhaps the most distinctive aspect of the New York City skyline is just gone. As I was driving here from Secaucus, heading to Jersey City to meet our satellite truck, we kept on saying, let's get closer, let's get closer, so we could see the World Trade Center. But as we got closer, we realized there is no more World Trade Center. Now, joining me live now is Stacy Calavito. She was in the heart of all this. She works at number two, World Financial. And Stacy, you showed up for work after the first plane crashed into the World Trade Center. Tell me what you saw after that. Um, after that, pretty much, it was we were all at the window and watching people kind of, I don't know if whether they were jumping or what, and following that, we saw a passenger plane come into the World Trade and a huge explosion, and then we uh, obviously evacuated. We were evacuated in front of the World Trade, to which it was horrific, and saw many people jumping out, and there were bodies, and there were, uh, I don't want to get graphic or upset, but... Stacy, tell me, when you saw the World Trade Center on fire after the first plane collided into it, what was going through your heart, what was going through your head? I think probably my biggest concern was for our friends and, and, and colleagues that I knew that were working in there, families and friends that were panicked watching all of this, and us having no way to communicate with the outside world, cell phones not working, phones not working, and just, just pure, I don't know, terror. Then when the other plane crashed into it, it must have just been unbelievable. It, it, it definitely didn't seem real. There was a lot of screaming, a lot of us crying, obviously, and and just seeing that sight, what I'm describing, was just, um, it was panic, utter panic. What floor were you on? I was on the 11th floor of Two World Financial. How did you get down? The stairs. Tell me what it was like on the street once you got downstairs. Um, on the street, it was pre pretty much just worse at that point because there was a lot of debris and there was a lot of fire. There was a lot of emergency vehicles. A lot of people screaming and crying, a lot of people very, very hurt, clearly very hurt. Um, Stacey Calavito, thank you very, very much yeah. for your account. I'm glad thank that you're okay. I'm glad thank that you. you're here to talk with us live. Okay. Again, we're live at Liberty State Park in Jersey City, a section of park where you usually have a spectacular view of the World Trade Center, but today we only see a large cloud of smoke. We're live in Jersey City, Logan Crawford, UPN 9 News. Well, and Brenda, back to you. Logan, thank you. A view that's changed forever, that oh, is no more. Indeed, I Never have I seen, or have any of us seen, uh, destruction and devastation like that from an act of, a uh, concerted act of uh, terrorism from groups or people unknown and known. Robert Schumacher was there. He was in Building 2 this morning. Let's uh, first listen in to CNN, though, and the latest that they have. Uh, the Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan have, uh, has already explicitly uh, said its standpoint uh, or its position about terrorism. This is a news conference that we're uh, picking up from uh, CNN, uh, from the Taliban news conference, uh, talking about the, the attack here. Uh, we have criticized uh, all forms of criticism as Afghanistan has itself faced and has become the victim of uh, uh, terrorism, and we you are now criticizing on the fact. Terrorism, your own care, Dara Chunke, on the fact that Shunke Dara. Terrorism is a, a terrifying and uh, 
hateful uh, hatred or hateful methods. Now, there are places that several of the city are now far from our main area. And this incident uh, is uh, from the humanitarian point of view, surely a very vast and very terrifying uh, incident. Any question? Any question? Quite easily. Please. Uh, have you received any kind of information or any kind of uh, communication from the United States or? موسیقی So they need con confidence, but up to now, no communication from him. Does the Taliban categorically condemn these attacks from the United States? Taliban in the middle of the war, from the Taliban to the other, from the Iraqi. We are the tourism to the other, and we are the tourism to the other, and we are the tourism to the other, and we are the tourism to the other. Our policy was very clear from the very beginning, and we have criticized, and even now we criticize terrorism in all its forms. Can you rule out any involvement by Osama bin Laden? Osama bin Laden last week kissed the Yahar. Can you kiss him the last week again and say please don't let him? Those police are far away from the door. How many did they do it? No, after now, no one has blamed or accused him for money. The Taliban have said that they will maintain Mr. Bin Laden without communication, unable to communicate. Can you be convinced that this time that your policy of keeping him without communication has been, has been effective in the recent months? Taliban has been able to keep Mr. Bin Laden without communication, but it has been effective in the recent months. Can you be convinced that this time that your policy of keeping him without communication Uh, no change in our policy in this regard. Do you think the policy is working, Mr. Mitwakil? Our policy is working. Can you say that? Yes, sir. Thank you. The decisions obviously turn to Osama bin Laden in the media. He's been mentioned as possibly having a hand in this. Are you concerned that Afghanistan could be on the receiving end of recrimination is the problem of it, it's on the back. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to thank you for your support. I would like to thank you for your support. I would like to thank you for your support. I would like to thank you for your support. I would like to thank you for your support. I would like to thank you for your support. Uh, I think that even if someone has taken his name in the media, it might be just because uh, uh, he was, uh, his name was repeatedly mentioned in the past in the comments, just for this reason, his name might have been repeated. Just the second half of the question, though, are you concerned that Afghanistan could receive a prior attack? That's true. I think that's true. Uh, we don't say, see or foresee any difficulty in this regard because there is no argument or no reason for it. If it were to happen, if there were to be a tax, what would the implication be of such a situation? If there were a tax from... As Jonathan said, if there were to be reprisals against Afghanistan, what would the implications of that be? Uh, I think that uh, if uh, the Taliban were to be it is a little bit earlier to say at this stage, but as we said that we criticize all common forms of criticism. So if Afghanistan uh, is attacked, then we can uh, call it uh, state terrorism.
it's also there's also been concerns expressed about Arab mercenary fighters in Afghanistan and Arab allegations allegations that we've made in Arab connection with Africa and have also been raised. Can you talk to those concerns? Can you rule out any Arab link? Uh, it is a very big and uh, enormous uh, incident, so just to connect it to, with uh, some people that even uh, one's logic cannot even accept it. So in my opinion, it, it, it might partly be just to say. Mr. Mitchell, are you surprised that the United States has received this sort of attack? The American military has received this sort of attack. Have you received this sort of attack? دمی خبر داشته که دخپل نویدا پیش از کدای سلام دکاف تاریخ کن در لوی پیشی ده چه افراد تابی خبر ده هرانی وارد. Naturally, because this might be the only and the unique kind of incident in the history of the United States. So, like anyone is also. What I'm getting at is, is you're listening to a news conference in. Afghanistan, or the Taliban ruling authorities, that's the foreign minister, Mutawakal. And he has been answering questions regarding their connection, if any, to the terrorist attack on the Pentagon and the World Trade Center today. He basically has uh, denied uh, any responsibility. He's been asked about the Osama bin Laden, who is basically... Uh, been given sanctuary in Afghanistan for a number of years and whether they had any knowledge of his responsibility for this or this attack or, or anything else for that matter. Uh, sometimes it's a bit difficult to understand um, the, the translator but uh, that's in essence what uh, has been going on in, uh, in uh, Kabul, Afghanistan. And back home, Robert Schumacher was in Building 2 of the World Trade Center this morning when the first plane went into the World Trade Center. Robert's on the line now. Robert, what happened? What were you being told? Well, when the first plane hit Building Number 1, we heard the explosion and some people said, look what happened. And, you know, we looked out the window and saw Building 1 on fire. And unfortunately, for whatever reasons, the emergency intercom came on and said a, build, a plane hit building number one there's no cause for alarm in this building we should all remain in the building and some people were smart enough to have left right away at that point but unfortunately i didn't i believed what they told me on the intercom and then sometime later there was a huge explosion in my building and at that point of course we all left you were able to get down. Was there so much smoke, noise, what? There was, there was uh, some smoke on my floor and some smoke in the uh, stairway, but not that much. Uh, the stairways were crowded, but it did move. And the smoke wasn't that bad that it caused me any problems. You could just smell it, but it didn't really cause me any breathing problems. So you were basically halfway up the building, is that correct, Robert? I was on the 58th floor facing north. Robert, we, we wonder if there was panic when you see those faces on the street. D did you see hurt people? I heard people yelling that people were jumping out of building number one. I saw the bodies in the streets. I saw people hurt. Uh, when of those leaving, there were people that were burned. I could see uh, that they had back evacuated. Uh, it was just horrible. I, but like I said, I'm, I'm the most upset that they told us to stay in the building. That they didn't tell us to leave right away. They could have killed me by telling me to stay in the building. But that's what they said. We had, that there's nothing to be concerned about the building. Number one had a plane hit it. And we were in no danger. How long did it take you, Robert, to walk from the 58th floor to exit the building? 
I'm not quite sure. Uh, I, you know, because the last thing I was thinking about was my watch <laughs> at that moment. Uh, but I can tell you that it was a very orderly evacuation. There wasn't any panic, uh, at least that I saw. Um, and we were able to get fairly, you know, it was fairly smooth. And we got out of the building and onto the street. And, you know, we're told to get away from the area. Did you ever rehearse any of this? Were there ever drills that uh, to evacuate this building? The only drills they ever had were fire drills in which they gathered